biggest night in Bellator history is here. The featherweight title rematch between new division king AJ Mercenary McKee and former champ Patricio Pitbull. Plus, the light heavyweight Grand Prix final, champion Vadim Nemkov, Nemkov pouncing, wow. versus top contender Corey Overtime Anderson. It's game time, baby. It's a Bellator blockbuster. Friday, April 15th, live on Showtime. April 16th. Yeah, money don't make no money. Oh. One of the top pound for pound fighters on the planet, oh. undefeated world champion Errol Spence Jr., takes on title holder your Dennis Ugas, hot off a career defining win. Oh. One epic stage, two dominant champions, three world titles on the line. Time to put up or shut up. Spence versus Ugas for the unified welterweight world championship. Saturday, April 16th, live on pay-per-view. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the beautiful borough of Brooklyn, Barclays Center. This is the official kickoff press conference for Davis versus Romero. I'm Brian Custer, the host of Showtime Championship Boxing. And on Saturday, May 28th, Showtime pay-per-view, we're going to bring you two explosive punchers who will let their fists fly because here in Brooklyn, we go hard. And we have Gervonta Tank Davis, five-time world champion, three different weight divisions, one of boxing's biggest draws, taking on the WBA number one contender, the hard-hitting, unbeaten, Roley Romero. Combined, folks, these two fighters have a total of 40 wins, zero losses, and 36 knockouts. On May 28th, somebody's O has to go. And both are promising that someone's gonna go to sleep as well here in Brooklyn. This pay-per-view fight is promoted by Mayweather Promotions, GTD Promotions, and TGB Promotions as well. And I know what you're thinking and what you're wondering. What about the tickets? I want to see this fight. Well, they went on sale at noon. You can get your tickets right now. SeatGeek.com. You can get them here at the Barclays Center, at the American Express box office. You can also go to BarclaysCenter.com to get your tickets for this event, because it will be an event here in Brooklyn. We can't wait to come back here to Barclays Center on May 28th, because this venue has been the site of so many big fights, meaningful fights, world championship fights, and it has already established itself as the new mecca of boxing, especially here on the East Coast. Let me introduce a man who helped make that happen. He's the CEO of BSE Global, which is the parent company of Barclays Center, and the Brooklyn Nets, Mr. John Abamandi. Thank you, Brian. Thank you all for being here today. It's a uh, cold and rainy day in Brooklyn, but on May 28th, it's gonna be a hot night here in, Bar in Barclays Center. The eyes of the boxing world are once again focused on this arena, and Brooklyn boxing is ready for another big night of fights. You know, in 2012, Barclays Center brought boxing back to Brooklyn for the first time since 1931. We're looking forward to building on this borough's legacy for hosting major fights with the WBA World Lightweight title. We're excited to be part of bringing this match up to life. And in fact, this will mark Javante's third fight here at Barclays Center after he won his first and second world titles at Barclays Center in 2017 and 2018. Gervonta, welcome back to Brooklyn. I know I can speak for all the boxing fans in this borough, the toughest of New York City's boroughs, when I say you have been missed. Our ring has been good to you before, and we're looking forward to seeing you back in action 
headlining Barclays Center for the first time. Now, Roly, great to have you in Brooklyn. I think you're going to find there's a special energy fighting here that you don't find anywhere else. So we're excited to see you in our ring. This event could not happen without our partners who share the same vision and dedication to growing the great sport of boxing. I want to thank Premier Boxing Champions, Mayweather Promotions, GTD Promotions, TGB Promotions, and all the respective staff. The partnership that we have built is invaluable, and you truly have been instrumental in providing the best platform possible for this great sport. I'd also like to thank Steven Espinoza and Showtime, who do tremendous work to keep the sport thriving. Barclays Center has now had over 20 fight nights on Showtime, and we're tremendously proud to have your platform showcasing our venue to the world. So I hope to see you all on May 28th for another big night at Brooklyn Boxing. Go get your tickets on SeatGeek.com, and uh, we'll see you at the fight. Thank you. Thank you, John. Great to be back here in Brooklyn. Great to be back here in Barclays Center and to be working with you once again. You know, both of these fighters, uh, they're promoted by one of the best promoters in the business, Mayweather Promotions, and of course the CEO of Mayweather Promotions, Mr. Style and Profiling himself, Leonard Ellerby. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> thank you. I'd like to thank Showtime, I'd like to thank the Barclays Center for having us. <laughs> We're having, this is, will be a monster, monster event come May 28th. Um, tickets are on sale now. Get them while you can because, again, this will be a sellout. When you look at these two fighters, both of them are tremendous punchers. But what I think it's going to come down to is that who can take whose shot? Because in boxing, as we know, anything can happen. With being in boxing for well over 25 years at the highest level, I've seen it all. You know, and so when I actually look at how this fight probably will play out, you know, obviously Rowley's a big underdog, and Tank is the favorite for a reason. Tank has shown that right now he's one of the best fighters in the entire world. Regardless of what the pay-per-view, um, pound-for-pound um, rankings say, there's no doubt Tank Davis is one of the best fighters in the world. But in my mind, and I know this is a very, very dangerous fight for him, because when I look around, and I, I use Floyd as an example, coming up through the ranks, I've seen him get hit with big shots, whether it be Victoriana Sosa, Demarcus Corley, Shane Mosley, Marcos Madonna. But what Floyd was able to do, he was able to show you that he had a Hall of Fame chin. So come May the 28th, when those two get in there and go to war, we're going to find out who has the better chin. We know that when it comes to skills, no doubt. Tank Davis has the best skills in the entire sport. But we're going to find out come May the 28th. If Roley hits him on a button, we're going to find out if Tank has a big chin or not. Also on May the 28th, Roley's never been hit by a tank before. How is he going to respond the first time he get hit with that hot shit? Will he be able to take it? Tune in, May the 28th. I guarantee you this fight will end in a knockout. There it is. The guarantee. Uh, let me bring to the podium, this is my guy. Uh, I like to call him the man with the master plan when it comes to boxing. He has led Showtime to its mark right now as being the undisputed Network in the sport of boxing. He is the president of Showtime Sports, Steven Espinoza. Um, thank you, Brian. Um, I'm also Brian's boss, so that makes <laughs> it tough for him not to say nice things about me, but I appreciate it nonetheless. Good to see all of you in person today. Um, I know it feels a little bit more 
a little bit closer to pre-pandemic uh, with all of us here in person. Um, as Brian mentioned, right now we're in the midst of the most ambitious schedule in boxing. In partnership with PBC and TGB, we've got nine marquee live events from March through July featuring 21 undefeated fighters, some of the biggest names in the sport. Spence, Charlo, Benavidez, Spence, and of course, Javante Davis, as well as the next generation of up-and-coming stars and future world champions from Tim Zhu, David Morrell, Mark Magzayo, Jerron Ennis, Brandon Lee. But most of all, what we're doing here is competitive fights, top to bottom, each card, competitive fights, meaningful fights, and value. And for the 22nd time on Showtime, we will be doing that from the Barclays Center, and we're thrilled to be back here. We've got a long history here, as long as, as we can say it's a long history, since 2012. Showtime televised the first Barclays Center boxing event ever in October of 2012, Danny Garcia, Eric Morales. And over the last eight years, the Barclays Center, their leadership has made a strong commitment, perhaps the strongest commitment of any venue in the U.S. and maybe the world, to big-time boxing. May 28th will be the 40th boxing event that Barclays Center has hosted in the last 10 years. That's 40 boxing events in 10 years, two of those during a pandemic. That's quite a commitment, and that is something that has been invaluable to the sport of boxing, not just in the New York City area, but on the East Coast and the U.S. as well. Of the 39 previous Barclays events, there have been five HBO, four Fox, a couple of NBC and ESPN, Fox Sports has a couple, and 21 Showtime events. Add in the two events we produce for CBS, and Showtime has done more events at Barclays Center than every other network combined, and we're thrilled to be back here. We truly appreciate the commitment that Nets owner Joe Tsai and BSE Global CEO John Avamondi have made, and we're thrilled to be working with this great staff here again. This will be Gervonta's 12th appearance on Showtime. You've seen Tank grow up literally in front of your eyes from pay-per-view pre-shows to fights overseas to championship fights, and now his fourth pay-per-view headline event. I, re I remember the first time I saw Tank fight in person it was um, six years ago, almost to the day, uh, April 1, 2016, off TV undercard in DC underneath Adrian Broner. Um, Floyd, Leonard, and Mayweather Promotions were telling me this was a kid to watch. Um, well, they were certainly right about that. Less than a year later, he won his world title here at Barclays Center. And now, six years later total, he's headlining his first his fourth pay-per-view. So from off TV to headlining four pay-per-views in just six years, that's a testament to the drawing power and the fan base that Tank has. His youth, his skill set, his box office appeal make him one of the most popular fighters and one of the biggest draws in the sport. Sold out venues in LA, Atlanta, Baltimore, and now his first headline opportunity here in Brooklyn. Every time Tank steps in the ring, it's must-see TV. It's can't miss. And in this fight, he's got another big personality. Rolly Romero, 14-0, 12 KOs, the number one contender in the WBA. It's not an exaggeration to say that Tank has never faced an opponent like Rolando Romero. He backs up his trash-talking with brutal KOs. We've seen it on Showtime, his debut on Showbox back in... 2019, huge highlight reel, knockout, and ever since then, he's established himself as one of the biggest punchers in the sport. He'll be making his fifth appearance on Showtime, and if you ask him, he says he gets his punching power from his dad, Rolando Sr., who was born and raised in Cuba and was decorated boxer in that country's amateur system. Rolly's father never got a chance to fight for a world title. So I don't have to explain to you how meaningful an event this is for the Romero fight family. Rolando didn't always command the spotlight. He was an unheralded amateur when he first caught the attention of Floyd and Leonard with his punishing sparring. 
that led to Floyd to sign him in 2016, and now he faces off with another star of the Mayweather Promotions banner, and the fight fans are definitely going to be the winners. As usual, we'll be supporting the event with the Emmy Award-winning All Access and doing promotional and marketing support across Showtime and the entire Paramount Global Corporation. It'll be a can't-miss event right here on Memorial Day weekend. We'll see you there. Thank you, Stephen. All right, let's get to it. That's why you're here. You want to hear from the fighters. First, let's hear from their corners. Guys who train them and have gotten them to where they are. We'll start with Roly Romero. And he is trained by Bullet Cromwell. Bullet, if you could, give the people your thoughts on this fight, how training's been going, and what should we expect? First and foremost, our glory to the most high God. Uh, thank you everybody for being here. Um, far as camp is concerned, uh, Roley's dialed in, he's ready to go. Um, we're having a great camp. Uh, skill wise, short the conditioning wise, um, his mindset is the best it's been. Um, I think we're in for one of those uh, record breaking performances um, here in Brooklyn, like you guys say it. You know, we're the new kids in the block, but we're not new to fighting. And uh, the motto is murder, 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 kill, kill, kill. And, and, it, and listen, like you said, somebody, oh, gotta go. This fight is gonna be a knockout fight. No other way to put it. Uh, much respect to the Davis camp. They put their work in, they've done their time. And uh, we're just here to derail that train. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Now to the other side, pride of Baltimore. Man's been with Tank since he was a youngin, Mr. Calvin Ford. How y'all doing out there? I want to thank everyone that's here. We really appreciate it. This is a big moment because this is where it started at. I want to say unfinished business. It's our second time at this mart. What I'm saying on my youngin, I ain't got to worry about him. I want everybody to tune in. I want everybody to be at the Barclays Center. I want Baltimore, New York, show up. You're about to see something. These two guys have been going at it for years. For years. It ain't about the old this time. It's about respect. And y'all gonna see it. I see Rody change his looks this time. <laughs> it's cold out there though, Rody. Be ready. This is my little young. He's back. Man, I'm telling y'all, if y'all not here May 28th, something wrong with y'all. It's Brooklyn. It's New York City. These cats going to bang. All right, let's hear from the fighters. Guess we'll start with the champ. 26 and 0. 24 of his fights have ended in a stoppage. That's a 93% knockout percentage. He is Gervonta Tank Davis. <laughs> Tank, if you could just give us a word on this fight. It is second time around. Your thoughts on finally getting in the ring with Raleigh Romero. Uh, first, I want to thank, again, everybody uh, for coming out. You know, I want to thank Showtime. Al Heyman, Mayweather Promotion, you know, um, rolling his camp for, you know, stepping up to the plate and things like that. So, we've ready. We've been in camp. This is not the uh, first time. We know we, you know, we came here to do. This is not the first time we've been here. You know, we've seen that Roddy choked up in the press conference when, you know, lights and shit was in his face. So, we'll see come fight night when you know what I mean? When everybody chanting against them and, you know, the bright lights and, you know what I mean? It, it's not just the fight. It's more so, like, everything leading up to the fight. We know that, you know, some people made the door and some people just, you know, talked their way through it. So, come fight night, it's going to be able to, 
you know, you're going to have to step up to that plate. I know some people, you know, uh, when, it, when it was my time, I ain't had no chance to look back or anything like that. I had to go walk through that door and become a man. So it's his time now to see what he do. So I'm going to be that guy to be, you know what I mean? Ain't going to be no easy walk for sure. So, again, what my coach said, ain't about nothing else. It's about respect. I'm a man, he a man, and you know what I mean? We got out our differences, and we'll just see who, you know what I mean, the last man standing come fight night. Love it. Settle those differences in the ring. Now, the challenger. Number one contender in the WBA. He is unbeaten. 14-0. 12 knockouts. Rolly Romero. Hey, look, I want to say, I just want to say thank you. Showtime, Mayweather Promotions, Al Heyman, all of them. You know, for me to even get this opportunity a second time after everything that happened, you know, I'm beyond grateful. And, you know, it's like... I'm just really excited to be here in the heart of Brooklyn, and May 28th, we're going to see what's going to happen. I'm going to knock Tank out. Let's talk about the fight. Tank, I'll start with you. This venue has not held a fight since March of 2020. That's when the pandemic started. Mm. And yet, you're the first. And it's the place, of course, where you became a world champion. And I remember that night. That's the night you stopped Jose Pedraza. You were on the undercard. You were the co-main that night. Now you're the main event. Pay-per-view. What does it mean to you to be back here in Brooklyn, Barclays Center, where it all started? It means a lot, you know, um, just to see, like, how things, you know, play apart. You know, I won my first title here, and I'm, I'm back, you know, holding my own, you know, um, card and things like that. I'm grateful, you know, so I just want to be the best I could be, you know what I mean? Um, again, it's, it's, it's time for me to show that, you know, um, I'm that man. I'm the man of the sport. I believe that, you know, I'm the face, you know, um, of the, uh, the lightweight division, you know, and it. You know, I just want to live up to that. You know what I mean? I just want to go out there and be better than I was yesterday. You know what mm. I mean? So that's mainly what I'm focused on. Mm. Roly, same question to you. What does it mean to you? Not only to have this fight, it is pay-per-view, but you're doing it of all places, New York City, Barclays Center here in Brooklyn. Well, I was, supposed to, I was supposed to spend my birthday over here in New York anyways, you know? So, I mean, I just felt like, you know, for me to have a good year, I'd have been here in Brooklyn, you know? So, I mean, it's a legacy fight, and I'm excited to do it here at, over here at the Barclays. You know, really, I had the opportunity to uh, have you on, on my show, The Last Stand, and you said, listen... There's a lot of people who underestimate me because of my style. It may be awkward. I didn't do the amateur system. I started maybe at an older age. Do you believe Tank is underestimating you? Yes, everybody's underestimating me. But, I mean, I started boxing at 17. I got my belt at seven, seven years in, you know, and, uh, I mean... I literally just went in there and beat the shit out of everybody, you know, and this is not going to change. He's going to get knocked out, and that's that. Javante, not going to lie, for the past couple of fights, you've kept saying, you haven't seen all of my boxing skills, and that you were hoping that this is the opponent that's going to bring the best gonna need of Javante Davis. Are you saying the same thing about Roley Romero? No, because he ain't, he's, they just worry about power. That's all they worry about. They ain't worrying about nothing else. Keep talking about knocking him out. <laughs> you see his nose, right? Hey, motherfucker, take the same shit every time. I hit him with one of the knees, he's going to knock his whole nose off. Like, look at his nose. <laughs> his nose is like real small. Like, Churning those bitches over there. 
it, I don't know, bro. It just, they just keep talking about this knock, knocking out 30 seconds. That's what they want. They want to go in there and try to get me out of there the first couple of rounds because we know that he don't. He will. He can't last down the line. We know that. He will. And I've been working. I worked with, what's this guy's name right here with the glasses on? Larry. I worked with him my last camp. I see what he do. We know what he do. So, and Bullet. We know what Bullet do. You don't know shit about me. Yeah, we know that none of your you fighters know got skills. Me. We know that for sure. You're going to sleep, We John. know that. We you know that. Sleep. We know yeah. that for okay. sure. You better take a when better this, look at the list that I have. Who? Name, name them. We I got, got a list too. Name them. <laughs> hey, listen. Name them. You getting beat the fuck up, bro. At the Damn. end of the day, this is rolling and you versus trash. Tank. Forget and you your trash podcast, at the post. You Nobody trash. cares about your the championships. Whole group, None of that. Shut the, the fuck up and get knocked out. That's it. Ooh. Throw the whole box Throw your ass away. away. Y'all some amateur motherfuckers away. that got lucky in the pros. You trash. How many of the pros do you, trash, you, you, do you guys have in your team? Okay, hold on. Let's Trump. get back to the fight. Let me ask you this. One, homie. Javante, it boils down to this. Is this fight business is this fight personal? If it was personal, it, them, they would have been been packing them up, to be honest. Yeah, okay. To be honest, like I said, it would have been packed y'all up. No, it's great, nigga. If it was fair. serious, if it was personal, I would have been an address niggas at that house. Nigga, you ain't bro. no gangster, first of all. Okay. Shut the fuck up. Okay. Talk boxing. Be professional. Okay. He is bro. talking boxing. Hold on, hold on. Be professional. We don't that, talk. That. We do what we do. Okay. Here we go. Y'all just talk Rolling. street stuff. We don't talk. We do what we do. Ro Chomp. Oh, I saw it. Rolling. Chomp my ass now. Um, last time we spoke, you said this is going to be the easiest fight of your career and that you are going to run Tank into a big shot. Tell us why that's going to happen on May 28th. Look, Javante keeps talking about these skills and stuff, but, I mean, I just see his face get swollen up every single fight. He doesn't really have much skills. He just bullies a bunch of smaller opponent, weight-drained opponents. He's not that special. And I just fought at 140. He's going to get knocked out. Yeah, you, you knocked out a weight-drained opponent that was in a bathtub for six, for what, to lose, what, six hours to lose, like, five pounds? That's not very impressive. And Keith Thurman couldn't knock him out? It's okay. Keep May 28, knock out. you're getting knocked out. We're ending your little reign, and you could go retire, and that's Pack that. him up. Pack him up and get him out of boxing. Man, the 28th, man. The 28th. Show up. Show up, because it's on. We'll wrap it up with this. I always like to ask this question for the guys. Start with you, Roly. For the hundreds of thousands maybe even a million, you never know, who will watch this fight for the 20, 25,000 that's gonna come here and pay hard-earned money to the Barclays Center. What can you guarantee them that they're gonna get on May 28th? Javante Davis on the canvas, he's gonna knock the fuck out. Tank, what can you guarantee us on May 28th? See y'all there. Folks, Javante Davis. Roly Romero, Showtime pay-per-view, Saturday, May 28th here at Barclays Center. Tickets are already on sale. But again, SeatGeek.com, BarclaysCenter.com. You can purchase them here at the Barclays Center at the American Express box office. You just heard from both of these guys. They said someone's going to sleep on May 28th. You do not want to miss it. Thank you for joining us. Gentlemen, we're going to have a face-off for members of the media.
The biggest night in Bellator history is here. The featherweight title rematch between new division king AJ Mercenary McKee and former champ Patricio Pitbull. Plus the light heavyweight Grand Prix final champion Vadim Nemko versus top contender Corey Overtime Anderson. It's game time, baby. It's a Bellator blockbuster. Friday, April 15th, live on Showtime. April 16th. One of the top pound for pound fighters on the planet. Undefeated world champion Errol Spence Jr. takes on title holder your Dennis Ugas. Hot off a career defining win. One epic stage. Two dominant champions. Three world titles on the line. Time to put up or shut up. Spence versus Ugas for the Unified Welterweight World Championship. Saturday, April 16th, live on pay-per-view.